When you're planning to walk Scotland's West Highland Way, there's a lot to figure out and it can feel overwhelming. I'm Donna from Some Bold Adventure and I'm going to break it down for you with 10 steps to plan a hike on the West Highland Way. Step number one, what kind of accommodations do you want? The first thing you need to decide is what type of places you want to stay in. Camping, wild camping, hotels, bunkhouses, or some combination of those things. Wild camping, sometimes called dispersed camping or backcountry camping, is legal almost everywhere in Scotland. There are a few rules around it, but you can set your tent up almost anywhere. If you're going to do that, know and respect the rules and be sure to leave no trace. Also, there's an area around Loch Lomond where you cannot wild camp, so make sure you do some research, make a plan to camp outside of this area or get other lodgings. Why would you want to wild camp? Well, you can stay in some beautiful locations. You can have solitude if you choose, stay where you like, hike as far as you like. You don't have to book anything. It doesn't cost you anything. Sounds great, right? So why wouldn't you want to wild camp? Well, you'll have to carry all your own stuff. There's no luggage delivery and you need a lot more gear, tent, sleeping pad, sleeping bag, or maybe you prefer to be around other people, or you're worried you can't find a good spot to camp, or you're gonna get anxiety because you have no idea where you're staying that night. Campgrounds offer tent camping with shared facilities, just toilets and showers. When camping, your tent will be on a pitch with other tent campers, so you have other people around you. Many campgrounds also offer cabins. These are no-frills rooms with differing amenities. Some will have a heater and electricity, others are a bed with a roof over your head. These have a little more comfort than tent camping and they cost less than hotels. Toilets are usually in the shared campground facility. Bunkhouses and hostels will generally have a shared bathroom and sets of bunk beds in a room. These are a step up from camping, but there's no privacy and they can be noisy, but they are cheaper than hotels. Hotels, as you know, are a room of your own. Sometimes there will be a shared bathroom down the hall, sometimes it will be in the room. These cost more, but if you like a little more luxury, this might be the best way for you. Many of the hotels also have restaurants. Step number two, baggage delivery service. You can hire a company to pick up your bag every morning and deliver it to your next destination. This is sometimes known as slack packing. There is no shame in it. I did it and I loved it. Here's how it works. You drop off your bag at a designated area where you're staying. Usually by a certain time, it was 9 a.m. for me. They'll pick it up and deliver it to your next destination by the afternoon. This means you only have to carry a day pack with just the basics in it, your rain gear, your food for the day, and so on. Your heavier gear, like sleeping bag or tent if you have one, get to travel by vehicle and you don't have to carry them. But if you're wild camping, they generally cannot deliver to a wild camping area. You have to have a designated place to stay that night. There are several companies that offer the service. I used AMS, I was very happy with them. You'll need to look at the cost, decide if you want to do that or not. Step number three, pick your route. This is probably the hardest part of planning to hike the West Highland Way. There's a lot to think about. Start with knowing what mileage you're capable of, keeping in mind how much gear weight you'll have. Get a guidebook. I had one I loved, and I'll put the link in the description, and then use that to see which towns have the kinds of accommodations you're looking for, whether that's hotels or camping. Then combine what you plan to do for miles with where the towns are to see how far you can get. There are also some good online sources for planning too. Here's a bonus tip. Don't plan your longest mileage days for the harder parts of the trail. So which parts are harder? That is the rocky stretch along Loch Lomond. Those were some of my longest mileage days and they were tough even without carrying a full pack. If you watch my video series on hiking the West Highland Way, you'll get a good idea of what the trail looks like through there. I will also share what my route was at the end of this video. Step number four, timing. When do you want to hike the West Highland Way? And maybe this has to do with when you can get time off or maybe you've always wanted to go in spring or you like summer or you think fall's the way to go. Pick what works for you. When you pick your dates, give yourself enough time to be able to book places to stay because they can fill up. Step number five, find accommodations. If you're wild camping, scope out the areas where you think you might end up, know where you can't camp so you have a plan for that. And if you're booking places to stay, get that done before they fill up. 
Step number six, make travel plans. If you're traveling long distances, you'll need to arrange airfare or train or whatever. Give yourself some extra time so if there are any travel delays or cancellations, you don't miss part of your trip. Number seven, gear. Get the gear you need and test it out. You do not want to be setting up your tent the very first time in a swarm of midges. Step number eight, training. Train for the weight you will carry or more. You can add extra weight while you're training to simulate elevation gain. Train on rough terrain and train carrying the gear you will use. Number nine, food. Can you get meals at your accommodations or do you need to bring it all? Are there places you can restock partway through? So look at your route and which options are available to you. You can buy some things in advance and plan out how to manage the rest. Step number 10, last minute supplies. Where will you get stove fuel if you can't bring it with you, say if you're traveling on a plane? Do you need to pick up backpack meals when you get there? So plan out where you can buy those things before you hit the trail so when you start on your West Highland Way trip, you are ready to go. I've got one bonus tip for you. Make sure you plan for the beginning and end of your trip. Are you gonna stay in Glasgow, Mulgai? How are you gonna get there? Do you have accommodations? So don't forget to plan for those things too. This is the route I took for my walk on the West Highland Way. It was nine days, though the last day was only two miles and could have been completed on day eight. Starting in Mulgai, I stayed at Drimmen, Rowardenen, Inverarnen, Tindrum, Bridge of Orkey, Glencoe, Kinlochleven, Glen Nevis, and ended at Fort William. There are lots of different ways to complete the West Highland Way, and it's easy to adjust based on the amount of days and or miles you want to do. Those are my 10 steps to plan a trip on the West Highland Way. If you liked the video, please hit the like button. Be sure to subscribe to my channel too to see more hiking and travel videos. And if you haven't watched it yet, check out the playlist with all the videos from my West Highland Way trip. Thanks for watching.